Hi, everyone, and welcome to another uh, episode of Meet the Artist. And tonight's artist is Jane Allen. Hi, everyone. So good to have you here. Thank you. How, how are you doing today? I am good. Thank you. Awesome. It's a beautiful day in Pennsylvania. Is it? Yeah. It was, it was a beautiful day here in New Hampshire, too. So we usually get your weather the next day, but that's good. <laughs> then tomorrow will be nice, too. Um, before we get started, I want to thank everyone who's coming here live tonight to watch this episode of Meet the Artist. And if you have any questions for Jane, please put them in the, in the comments and I will ask them for you. Um, also, too, don't forget to check out her website and her blog. The information is up in the de uh, description of this um, post, so you can check those out there. And uh, if you're watching the replay, thank you for taking the time to watch the replays. You are still allowed to ask questions. Just put an at sign in front of Jane's name or my name so that we'll see your question and we'll get back to you. So that's all you have to do. And if you like this, please put the at sign and type a friend's name who is a member of the group so they can come in and check it out too and find find our lives easier. So any help that you give me, and I have a lot of angels out there in the group that are helping <laughs> others find the lives. So thank you so much, all of my angels. Um, but so here we go. I mean, I see we got the memo, right? We're wearing pink. Yes. Hey, okay. I'm always about pink. <laughs> That's, I love pink. So um, the first question, and while you answer that, I'm going to go over to Facebook and I'm going to make sure that uh, people can find this. Uh, please tell us like where you're from. Okay, well, I live in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania, and I've lived in pretty much this area my whole life. I've only been maybe like 30 miles away. So so you, you've, you've always lived there and you've, but you've traveled, right? Oh, yes. Yes. I like to travel. In fact, I'm looking forward to it. Now your parents, your parents grew up there as well. Um, my mother did. My father didn't. But my father, uh, he was raised by be, between his grandparents. And so his grandmother came to this area for a job. And that's how he got here and met my mom and voila, me. I like that. La la me. <laughs> Are you an only child or do you have siblings? No, I have um, an older brother and a younger brother. And then um, my father died when I was 11. My mother, mother remarried when I was 21, but I have five stepbrothers and sisters. And we, I mean, uh, we get along great today. So it's nice having that relationship. Today you get along great. You didn't as kids. Oh no, I meant that you know sometimes when you have stepbrothers and sisters, you sort of like your uh, stepfather dies and you lose contact with the family. Or, but my stepbrothers and sisters are were still um, just as close as ever. Does that make sense? Now, are they? Um... Are they artistic as well? Are your parents artistic? Do you come from an artistic family? Uh, yes. Um, my, um, my father is a jeweler and a clocksmith. My mom was creative. Um, I have lots of cousins on my mother's side and they're all, we, all kinds of different creative things. Um, so, you know, and I am close to my cousins. And uh, when I was younger, I was, they were big, we all were big into sewing. And so um, there's lots of different skills. My stepbrothers and sisters are very musical. And so were my parents, but I'm not. Oh, cool. Yeah, my, my I have musical siblings as well. And but I, I'm, I could sing that was about it. I tried, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> yeah, or I mean, I, I took piano lessons, I technically understand how it all works. But I just don't have the rhythm. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand that. Um, what, so how, how was it that you found your creative, like how old were you when you found out that you were creative? Were you always creative from this? I guess back? I, I guess I didn't know that I wasn't 
because I always liked art, always, even as a kid, liked art supplies. Um, I, from, I made doll clothes for my dolls or even out of a box, I might make a, a car or a house or a little furniture and things. So it, it really was always a part of my life and I always loved color. So I was, you know, I loved crayons and colored pencils and just seeing how all those colors played together. That, that, you know, now that you say that, it's like, I never thought I was artful either, but I did the same things you did. I would make the doll clothes and take the shoe box and make a bed for the Barbie. And yes, stuff. I never thought of it as that being artistic. <laughs> yeah. Or I, I think sometimes we think being creative, we have to be like uh, this great, you know, do a great project or you know, creativity is in so many areas, even like writing and using your imagination, telling stories. Um, and, and, you know, if for like me as a creative, and I think most creatives, um, there's a lot of joy in, be create, in being creative. And, um, it, you know, you can enjoy your own company, spend a lot of time just playing and working on things. And it's just wonderful really it That's is how I it's like yeah. a yeah it's like an escape into another world into your yeah. own mind right you, you lose track of time it was oh what was it uh um on the miracle on 34th street remember um have you you must have seen that movie i have seen it but i go and, ahead and, and santa you know chris kringle says when uh when the, when natalie wood doesn't want to play the games or they won't let her play games because she's not an animal and he said, you have to have an imagination. And she goes, mm -hmm. what's that? And he, and he explains to her, you know, how you have other nations, you know, in the world. Well, imagination is a nation also, you know, it's, it's in our heads, but it's our, our world. And it's a nice place to escape to. Oh, yes. Um, and I think um, like a lot of kids, one thing too, were you a daydreamer? Because I think if you're a daydreamer, I think that's kind of like someone who has an imagination. You can it just is. get lost in your thoughts. It is. It's and that's perfect. It definitely. Mm -hmm. So when so when did you? I assume like you you started in the decorative art world by painting and taking classes like everybody else, or how did you how yes. did you begin in that area? Uh, well, I got this spotlight right on my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyhow, uh, so a as a kid, uh, you know, of course, I told you I like to sew, I like to cook, I like to create. Um, I had, um, I painted and would draw and things. But um, then um, I took a, I went to junior college, I took a class called crafts. And I never really thought about it, but like we made leather crafts, jewelry, um, just all kinds of things. And like after that, I really enjoyed doing those three dimensional things. We made some pinch pots and, you know, I started doing stained glass. I did cake decorating. Um, but then like, um, and I kind of got away from painting after I started doing the crafts. But then in um, my 20s, I went into a needle craft shop and they had a three week class on Balamalari. And so I went and I took the class and <clears throat> back then there weren't a lot of shops or anything, but I, I started buying books and trying things on my own. And I just really enjoyed um, the decorative painting and so I got involved I started uh, as time went on going to conventions and things and so you were so you were junior college what is that like 19 uh yes uh, like 17 19 17 think... yeah wow because mm -hmm. that's young so you you well, felt you fell in love well I'm saying young it, uh, it's just a <laughs> matter of speech <laughs> Well, and I was a January baby, so I was like one of the youngest kids in my class. So. Were you? Yeah, so I didn't I graduate high school until I was 17. So yeah, I would have gone in college 18, 19, whatever. Um, well, but I just turned 17 in, in January, end of January and graduated in May. So. Wow. 
Wow. So now I don't think you can do that. No, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> but uh, so that's really wonderful. Because I mean, some of the artists I talk to, they don't find their way into that part of their life until after they're married and had kids. And what do you do? You know, you're home all day with the kids kind mm -hmm. of thing. So that's, that's where the comment came from. <laughs> oh, okay. You well, I always I, I, I don't have children, I always had a career. So I always worked. Um, but I always made time for art on the side. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so when, so when you started doing this, I mean, I assume you were in acrylics. Is that, um, is that oil? Yes. Yes. And that's a stroke work. Uh, Balamalari. Yeah. And you know, when you first learn strokes, it's a challenge, but I remember practicing every night and at the end of those three weeks, I was accomplished. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, very studious. Ooh, <laughs> it's hard. It's not easy. It is not easy. I know it isn't. It you, is not you know, easy. You feel like giving up, but then you know, and as time went on, there were more artists, more books, and you just kept trying different things, and and um, you start going to conventions. You start going to, uh, you go to a convention, and then you think. Mm, I like that teacher. I'm going to try to take a seminar with her or your, you know, and then I found um, a local chapter and you take a seminar at your chapters and it just keeps growing. Yeah. The day, those were the days that, that was, definitely, that is exactly how it worked and, and it was wonderful. And I'm hoping to be able to bring that back a little bit, but when did you, when did you start designing your own things when well, did that evolve uh, well um probably um uh, you know after a bit you start doing something and you think well I don't really want that to be green I'm going to paint it blue and then after a bit you think well I I want something else in this picture so I'm going to take this pattern and this pattern and put it together and then after a bit you think well I'm just going to draw this and you know I still feel that drawing isn't my strong skill, but you know, I just started drawing and uh, painting some of my own things and played and, you know, then you just kind of see what happens. But um, I actually, um, I'm trying to think of the order here. But anyhow, um, one thing that really helped me with my designing, uh, I'd actually designed and painted some things and on uh, Della Wetterman's tin. And then uh, Della came to our chapter. And at that time, um, my husband was actually away. Uh, he was on a, one of his little adventures. And uh, um, so as Sheila Rouse, I don't know if you remember her, no. uh, she, she was kind of taking Della out to eat. So I'd go along every night <laughs> because, hey, I didn't have to cook for myself. And, uh, you know, I got to know Della and I showed her my things. And so I didn't hear anything from her. And like a year later, she sent me an email and said, would you like to start putting patterns in our booth of some of the tin that you designed? And so um, it, it was perfect timing because I was ready to retire from my uh, real job. And um, so I got some patterns together and I think it was Tampa. It was an SDP convention. I was already planning on gone. So I had like four patterns I took. And uh, then in between, when I didn't have classes, I'd help Della and Bill in the booth. And I thought, gee, they really need my help. <laughs> so uh, like after that, uh, I would go to Hoot and uh, Vegas and, you know, would help them at the shows. And a couple years later, my husband retired and he started going to the shows and helping us. And um, so it just we, it just evolved like it, it sounds almost rel relatively fast, quick. Yeah, in a way. Yeah. And like uh, we're still friends we're planning on going on a cruise this year if things work out uh but yeah like at the first I think the first show then uh someone from Leisure Arts came up and asked Della to put something in a book and uh, Della said I'm too busy ask her <laughs> and then after that uh I worked with the editor and uh, she I was ended up being in four of their little multi-artist books so nice. yeah it was a blessing and then the one show in Vegas, um, 
Bill and Daryl were both sick and I was running the booth and uh, Linda Heller came into the booth and uh, we were chatting. In fact, I think Shara was there and told uh, Linda how clever I was or something. And um, Linda says, well, if you ever want to design, here's my card. And I said, well, I have designs in this booth. And so Linda looked around and she told me what she wanted. And uh, I was going to be in the ornament issue. And then it wasn't long after that, she uh, called me to do another design uh, and for an of ornaments that was actually in a in, an, in a book before the first set of ornaments were, so then that I built that relationship with Linda, and uh, she would see me at shows or call me and ask me to do different things, and that was really a blessing too. And sometimes she'd say, "Well, Jane, I want you to put birds on these pieces of fruit." Huh. I didn't really have that idea. So, you know, it stretched me and I have to think about it and how do I want to do this? And so, you know, it was good. It was that, good to, uh, to stretch you and to grow you and help you. Right. So, cause one of my questions was who was your mentor? And it sounds like Della really played a big part in that, right? Yeah, she was, she was a uh, big, and even before that, like I actually, um, like Sheila Rouse was a good mentor. You know, she always believed in me. And um, actually one of my art students and I did uh, two books with Prudy Veneer before that, like uh, oh, wow. a number of years before that. So you had so, people coaching you along. A lot of blessings, a lot yeah. of wonderful blessings. And, yeah. you know, sometimes when you trip onto them, you don't even realize it, but you look back and you realize how blessed you were. So when you started, when you went with Della and did the first, the first convention, did you also say, hey, I'm here, I should submit to teach, you know, knowing you were going to be there? You know, I didn't do that for actually a long time because I always felt like we were so busy in the booth that I didn't have time to do that. But I should have. <laughs> when did you start? When did you start teaching? Probably at, at your home or in a local store? Or? Well, uh over the years, actually, even in my real job, I did teaching. I taught computer software classes and like proprietary web development software and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I was comfortable teaching. I did do classes, sometimes nothing um, consistently, but I did do classes in my home. Oh, and along the way, I also had a little shop. So <laughs> um, I... Um, my uncle in Utah had this um, sewing business where he made bags and things. And he was, he said, you know what, do you know any new ideas or something? And I said, well, you could make those bags for artists to paint on. But anyhow, it, he had, so his factory, you know, they were more geared for making lots, of, like you ordered 50, 100, 1,000 bags, not onesie, Tuesday twos. So then um, I got some of my cousins who sew and we started making bags and things. We started doing shows. Um, I had a little shop and I, I did all of this while I was working full time, which totally amazes me now because I can't even get half the stuff done I did then. But, um, you know, we would go to national show every year. We had a little business called Country Cousins and my cousins actually worked for me and we made different things for people to paint on. We had tote bags and I liked the process of designing new things. We made like Christmas stock stockings that had fabric cuffs. And then we made uh, jumpers were big. We made jumpers and then they had these different little panels and collars and things that you could add to them that you would paint on. So uh, I did that too. I'm I think I lost track of what you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start teaching? It sounds like you've been oh, a teacher all your life. <laughs> so when I had that little shop, I taught classes in there too. Maybe I do like, um, you know, this quarter I might have four or five classes and then the next quarter have a few. So, so anyhow, that's how that, <laughs> but then, um, after, uh, Della and Bill stopped going to shows, uh, I actually, Chris Hoy encouraged me to come to NET. And so uh, I went to NET 
And the first show I didn't teach or anything. And then the, the ladies there that worked there uh, came in my booth and encouraged me to teach. So I submitted to teach that, that year or the next year. And then I, again, teach, submitted to teach again. Oh, awesome. Because you've been there almost every year now for a while, right? Probably about, I think this might be my fifth year, but I'm not teaching this year. Oh, um, no. It just happened that the week that uh, the submissions were due, I had some personal things that just yep. made it difficult for me to get yep. my things in. Are you going to still have a booth or no? Yeah, oh, yes. And I'm oh, going to do lots of make it and take it. And oh, good. I'm working on little designs now. So and like here's a little design that I'll be teaching as a make it and take it. Oh, sweet. <laughs> it's not painted yet, but. So anyone who's not familiar with what we're talking about, NET is New England Traditions. It's in October, um, the Tuesday to Sunday, Tuesday to Saturday before Columbus Day. It's like I should have the dates in my head, but I don't. Yeah, I can't tell you exact dates either. It's like fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, something like that. So. Uh, yeah, so they have their catalog is on so New England traditions.org and you can see their catalog and all. Yeah, offer. And there's a really it's a good show. There's a lot of good teachers. Uh, everything's in one building. Uh, yep. So you never have to go out of the building for days and you can have a lot of fun. Yeah, you don't have to truck all your your stuff down the street like we used to when the trade show was down the down the street. Yes. Yeah, you can slip in between classes to the trade show. And you know, you you don't have to carry all your stuff for the day around. You can go back to your room easily. So how did you transition into and I, I just this came to me this afternoon? You're I think the queen of Quickwood. <laughs> <laughs> I just I like how that. that sounded. So I said, you know, that's what she is to me. She is the queen of Quickwood. How did you evolve into the using Quickwood in your designing? Well, um, so, you know, in a way, I always, when I talked about crafts and I got involved, I did like little palm or clay things. I actually took a slab construction pottery class in, in college. And so I like that. Um, three-dimensional art. So anyhow, I was just designing, painting, painting on Bill and Della's tin, painting on other things. But then um, Wendy Young, who is in my area, she, I, I didn't know her before, but she started advertising on Facebook, these quick wood classes. And so I started going to them and I, I really liked it. I liked the three-dimensional aspect. The thing about quick wood I like is that it cures quickly. So you know, it's not like something you have to bake or we're air dried where you're waiting overnight. So um, that was the kind of the beginning. And then um, <clears throat> actually uh, Wendy, her husband, uh, well, she was teaching and actually even Wendy and myself and Amy uh, Mogish did a book together. Wendy was in that. And we went to uh, Hoot together, the three of us, and we had a booth. But um, did then, you know um, what Wendy's name, last name was for the people? Young. Young, Wendy and, Young, okay. Yes, and um, she doesn't, her husband got sick, and so she she is a full-time caregiver, um, and she does create, so if you follow her on Facebook, she does create things and sell them, but she doesn't teach right now. I don't know, um, you know, I get a feeling that she might go back to that if she has the opportunity, but anyhow, um, so, so anyhow, at who Shara saw some of Wendy's things too, and she liked them. So Shara came back here and uh, was going to stay with me, and we went over to Wendy's to take a class. And then she had Wendy go to California with her. So, so the next, er, she had Wendy go to California to teach at, at one of her little seminars. So then the next year, uh, she was going to do the same thing. But, and she already had her airfare to come back here and things. Well, here, Wendy's husband got sick and she couldn't, um, she couldn't meet to um, even create together and she couldn't go to California. So um, we decided that we would just play and maybe create some of Cher's things with Quickwood. 
So I uh, share the first day uh, we're playing and we created some birds and things. It took us all day to make four birds. And then the next day, <clears throat> oh, that night, Shara goes to bed early. And so uh, my um, another friend, Linda Cap, was here and I said to Linda, I think I'm going to try to make one of Shara's dolls. And so I started it. I didn't have it finished. But when Shara got up the next morning, she came out here in the studio and she saw it. That day we were crazy. <laughs> we just started making all these different little characters and we worked and we, we were worked late that night just creating all these little characters. And even Cheryl went to bed and I'm still creating and I go in while she's in bed and show her something when we come back out. And uh, then the next day uh, we got up and we started making more characters, but Cheryl was leaving that day. and. Um, so we worked up till noon and that was our first set, our first, like we didn't have any plans of doing this. It just happened. And that's when we de designed Shara Jane. And, you know, that was our first series of patterns that came out. And uh, then um, I went, I was planning on going to California with, uh, to, to share a seminar anyhow. And so I went and I offered to teach uh, there for, and I taught a couple, I think uh, three designs. I think I took like a day and a half or two days. Oh, so wow. that was fun. And, you know, like anything else, the more you do, the more ideas you have. Especially when you're hanging with other creatives and then you're oh, definitely. Like, your ideas spawn new ideas for them. And then that spawns new ideas for you and you keep going back and forth, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Really, you know, that is really a great Thing. I, I know some people like to kind of work in a vacuum, like I don't want to work with someone else. You might find out how I do something and steal my idea. But really uh, working with other creatives and being in a creative group, mentoring each other is really, you know, wonderful. I encourage everyone to have friends, create with your friends. Definitely, definitely. So what would you say now? I mean, it, or over your art his, your art journey um, is your favorite subject matter? Oh, I, I like whimsical things. Um, I have a little sense, I think I have a sense of humor. <laughs> so I, I like, um, you know, like I like snowman and uh, angels. Uh, I'm particularly fond of angels. Um, I like little characters that make me smile, like this little bunny and um birds i like birds we have a lot of birds um my husband feeds the birds we have a lot of birds in our yard so i like that so what so how is it that how is it that you come up with your designs how do your designs come to you it, well like i said the more you do the more ideas you have like the other night or the other day i just it, you know, they just pop into your head. <laughs> like the other night, uh, I thought about making a bird, a dancing bird, and I got up and I just started creating. And Adorable. I came, up with, I came up, I don't have it painted yet, but I just sat down and did it. You know, even though I also, the other thing I always encourage everyone is to keep a sketchbook. I um, have sketchbooks ongoing. I have pals of them everywhere. And, you know, I just, if I have a little idea, I put a little thumb sketch in it. And if my whale is dry, if I can't think of something, I'll look in my sketchbook uh, and, uh, you know, it'll trigger an idea. And I'm amazed when I look through my sketchbooks, how many of those ideas have I've turned into designs, into patterns. Cool. Cool. Um, I, you know, drawing's not my forte, so. Mine that... either. <laughs> I don't feel that's my strength. Although I will say, um, you know, I kind of, I'm curious, I read and things. So I bought the book, Drawing on the Right Side of My, Right, right. Side of Your Brain, but yeah. I think it's uh, Betty Edwards. And that's an excellent book. And because, you know, I've taken drawing classes where you 
turn something into a spear and into a circle and into a square and you put them all together to make the character where um, using that book is more about like looking at the spatial relationship of lines. And it really uh, makes it a lot, to me, a lot easier to draw. So I encourage you to do that. And I've taught some kids drawing classes uh, using the book and some, uh, both, I had two kids that really the light bulb came on at a certain point and they just took off, you know, like the, the one little boy, uh, he's, I felt like I was boring him. And all of a sudden the next week he came and he was just drawing everything. Uh, isn't that wonderful though? I'm sure even with your students that you've had to see that light bulb go off. Oh, I love it. Yeah. That's a, that's a whole nother, mm -hmm. whole nother level of, I don't know, happiness, I guess, success. or whatever. Yes. And you know, even when you're working, like I said about mentoring, even when you're working with kids, it's amazing. Um, the ideas you get working with them. Oh, yeah, they're very inspiring, aren't they? Yes. And even like I remember the one uh, time the one student said to me, uh, do you ever learn anything from us? And it's like, yes, like they might put two colors together you'd never think about. And you put those together or, you know, something else, um, you know, they might draw something and it triggers something else like what you the idea you get from it doesn't even look like what they did the someone was asking about the book betty edwards drawing on the right side of the brain that's yes. what it's called so I'm it, it, you know there's little exercises um you just start reading the book start doing the exercises um You'll i actually amazed. have it and i never cracked it open <laughs> that's the problem shame on me <laughs> but you, you know i know a lot of we do that uh and actually i took it we were on uh vacation in key west and so you know i would like just get up and maybe go out there out on the porch and draw a little each day and i couldn't get enough of it it was so good cool that, that well it's in, i'll have to go dig it out <laughs> mm -hmm. take it on vacation with you when you have time right or right. something like that so That's that you really sitting by the pool side right <laughs> or on the yeah beach. <laughs> really or you know you go somewhere for the weekend or riding in the car although you know it's harder to oh, draw. i find I, it's harder to draw when the car yeah. is moving that would make me sick um so the next question is what is your favorite medium uh probably acrylics and even you know i take uh, tube acrylic classes and things and i do like that because you don't have to think about colors uh, you know, you mix all your colors and that's kind of nice, but for most people that's out of their comfort zone and really in a way uh, with deco art, I use deco art products with their, I know the paint colors, so it's easy just to think, oh, I like this with this and pick it up and use it. Right. So I like, I mean, I like craft paints is probably I my think, favorite thing. I think that, um, I've painted in oils as well, but I think that the mixing colors, you have to, I feel like you have to have some knowledge of color theory to know mm -hmm. you it can helps. with what in order to achieve your, your destination, if you will, your goal. Right, um, right. So and I think uh, lots of times when we start and, you know, I like color, I like bright colors, but I think like with when you're mixing colors and things, you don't think to tone them. And all of a sudden you have this, like a really bright blue uh, right. bird or something. It just, it's too strong. So you need to know what you can add to it to tone it without changing mm -hmm. the hue too much and stuff. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it is in itself a very fun exercise to do mm -hmm. is just to play with that. When and it really isn't too hard. Like you could, uh, you know, just tone it with the opposite color on the color wheel. Like if it's uh, red, put a little green in it that tones it or, you know, like purple. Uh, what's purple? <laughs> the opposite color red. No, wait, not yellow. purple. Yellow. Yes. <laughs> you know, use a little purple in your yellow to tone it. Um, um, blue and orange. Or you can just pick like, um, you know, um, like some brown, like 
burnt umber and just everything you're painting, just tone a little bit with burnt umber mm -hmm. or some of the like, um, or burnt sienna, like the siennas and the umbers. Yeah, an earth tone, and white. an earth tone of sort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite brush? Uh, not, uh, well, I, I, I can paint with almost three brushes, a half inch angle shader, a uh, number three round and a liner. <laughs> there you go. And you're all set, right? Mm -hmm. Although I have a lot more brushes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, um, a brand, a certain brand that you prefer over the others or? Uh, not and really. I mean, I started using low Cornell. Now, um, I think um, they they kind of, they went out of business, but they do have uh, one of the family members have started making brushes again. Yeah, King Art. Yes, that's right, King Art. I couldn't remember what yeah, it was. They have yeah. I just looked at their website the other day, and they actually have quite a, a bunch of brushes, uh, extensive line of brushes that mm -hmm. they're making. So um, that's good news, right? <laughs> Oh yeah, and I mean I think uh, is it Sharp? They're nice brushes, and I'm sure. I mean, really, I think they all work great. Yep, I used I used to have when I painted. I used a lot of um, mostly low Cornell brushes, mm -hmm. Me and too. but there was one brush that was a royal brush. It was a number ten flat. And I did not like Low Cornell's number 10 flat. I don't know why, but I always <laughs> went back and had that one royal brush that I knew was going to do the job for me. And, and you know, uh, Royal, uh, they had like brushes. There's maybe like 10 of them in a pack for $10. They're mostly designed like for crafters or kids. Some of those brushes work great and last forever. Mm -hmm. It is. They are. So um, I teach a lot. I in the over time, I have taught a lot of kids crafts. So, you know, always looking for those affordable brushes. Right, right. That that will hold up. Right. That, you know, if you ha have a bad brush, it's just very frustrating and you're never going to get anywhere. Right. Do you have um, a tip? Uh, what is your like best tip that you give your students? Well, when I teach kids classes, I, I have three rules. So let me think of, see if I can remember them. Uh, oh, the first rule is there are no rules. The second rule is everyone's art is good. So be kind. And the third rule is it's okay to copy. That's how we learn. There you go. So, uh, you know, I think that's one thing too. Sometimes we think, we should just kind of start out with all these designs popping out of our head and creating all these different things. But really, um, you learn how to do things by copying. You know, now to, you should not be copying people's work and selling it as yours. But, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong for you to practice and copy something. Well, but you don't. Isn't that what we're doing though? I mean, when we buy, when I buy your pattern, I am creating your, what your design. So I'm technically copying your design right, right. to create it, to practice it. But there is that difference and, and the people need to know of copyright laws, which means you can't take Definitely. Jane's pattern, rewrite it and take a picture of your piece and call it your original and sell the pattern. You can't right, or make, <laughs> make the bird blue instead of green. And, Give them three you know, wings instead of two. Yeah. <laughs> and, the other, and the other thing is, you know, I think artists are very generous. So buy their patterns. Don't get, have your friend buy it and make a photocopy of it. You know, they're, they're inexpensive the, enough. Most most of us, right. most of us are inexpensive enough that, you know, um, support your local artists, because well, I found like some artists over over the last two decades had to go to uh, get a real job, I call it, because mm -hmm. they couldn't support themselves on their artwork anymore. You know, right. so they had to go get real jobs. And as soon as they do that, they stop designing. As soon as they stop designing, there's no patterns for you to buy. Where are you? 
Right. And, no. and you know, sometimes you can learn a lot from other people. Like you might see uh, one thing I always, I always love color, but like, oh, someone shades red with purple. I didn't think of that. I like how that looks. Or they might sh shade um, orange with purple or um, you highlight red with hot pink. Uh, you know, so like you can pick up that little tip by observing, but you're never really stealing anything. Right. You're not stealing a design. You're just uh, learning from others. Right. And then eventually, like that's how I became a designer is because, or, or even learned how to draw because after tracing enough pattern packets, you know the shape of a leaf, you know the shape <laughs> of an apple, right? So you, exactly. <laughs> So you can start doing it your own. You just do it automatically and not even realize what you're doing is my case. Um, is there a medium, a subject, or a technique that you haven't tried yet that you'd like to try? Yeah, there's always something new that I'm interested in. Uh, I can't, well, um, you know, since I started sculpting and I have started playing a little bit, like, uh, I took this little paper clay class of a, this is a bird that's a bee that has a human face. Uh, but I am interested now that I've started playing with uh, Quickwood, um, maybe doing a little bit more with um, paper clay or other media, you know, other ways of sculpting and creating. Cool. There's always something new. There and you is. should, I feel you should. I mean, okay, my house is ready to explode, but I think you should always keep trying new things. That's how we grow, right? That's right. It makes life interesting. The more things you do, then the more ideas you have too um, that you can mix together. So I want to just say that if there's anyone here tonight that has any questions for Jane, you can put them in the comment section and I will ask them for you. Um, and thank you, you know, we still have a few questions, but thank you for being here tonight. And there's a lot of accolades over there, Jane, you can go check them out after. <laughs> after. Well, thank you. But um, people but are very please, kind. Pe people are very kind, which is, and I, I appreciate is, I love that. this group. Thank you. Yeah, I love this group <laughs> for that reason, because everyone in this group is so kind, and so helpful and sharing and there's just, I, they're all angels to me. So, it's just, um, you know, true uh, too, like just sharing, giving away really gives you joy. Yeah, yeah it does. So what, um, because you're also an artful webinar artist, yay. Uh, do you have your project there to show us oh, and yes, talk a little yes, bit about see. it? So this is, um, I'm in the ornament club. And so this is in June, June 8th, and it's seven in the evening till seven till 10, Pennsylvania time, Eastern Standard Time. And this is, uh, the stocking is wood, but all this embellishment is quick wood. So if you've never even worked with quick wood, this would be a great project because it wouldn't be overwhelming. Uh, you learn, I, tr I try to tell you a lot when I, I teach a class, but one thing nice about quick wood is um, you can make a whole big quick wood project or like, say like these little berries and leaves, you can stick that in the top of an ornament and it just adds an extra element, just gives you a little extra dimension. It makes it nice. Um, I, the, I do uh, have a kit for the class or I sell just the individual stockings too and they're on my website. And that I'm just going to look to see. And what is the date on that one? June 8th. June 8th. So, well, that's when I'm planning on being there. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I will try to be there too. <laughs> so, I, I think I... there's still a few seats left. If you want to sign up for it, you can go to artfulwebinars.com and look under the ornament series. Uh, we're calling it series now because it's really not a club because anyone you can buy them individually and a club kind of always confuses people and they think they need to buy them all they don't need mm -hmm. to buy them all. but you gotta you know you don't want to miss this one because this is a lot of fun um so 
what else and where else will you be teaching? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm working on some things, but I have nothing else lined up, but I will be at net. I will be doing make it and take it's in my booth. Uh, I'm working on that. Will they be quick wood things? Oh, or yes. Probably? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, all okay. quick wood. Yeah. So if you, and you know, uh, I'll have different types of projects. You can come and make one or you can be stay all day, <laughs> but you know, I'll do different uh, types of things so that if you do have a, an hour or two here and there, uh, you can come and try different things. That sounds exciting. I, I plan on coming down on Friday to check out the trade. Oh, good. So I'll have to stop yes. by and play. Sharon and I are working on something right now. Uh, so once we get that finished, uh, we'll be advertising that. Excellent. So, okay. Then. Oh, and I, I guess I am also for this uh, decorative uh, painter um, the SCP society academy yeah. uh i think it's november 6th i'm doing an ornament there do you have do you have that one done up i don't have it done yet it's <laughs> only it's only in my sketchbook <laughs> there you go there you go so that check that out too so the decorative painters art academy is that what it's called um yes i think it's art academy if you go to their website there's a little link for art academy yeah <clears throat> excuse cool. me and now how how can i mean i put your website information your blog information but go ahead and tell them again okay so my website is janeallencreates.com <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> and my blog, <laughs> what's that allergy season <laughs> definitely i'm struggling and uh uh my blog is janeallencreates.blog on my blog I share, um, there's a lot of DIY projects, how to make glitter houses, how to make, there's an egg nativity, um, just different things with Quickwood. So you can go on the blog and find a lot of little um, projects. I also share recipes because I also like to cook and bake. Uh, so you can look on there for recipes if you want. <laughs> Is that true that you make some really awesome cookies? <laughs> Well, people tell me that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, my family, uh, my nieces and nephews love my uh, chocolate chip cookies. And that recipe is on my blog. Okay. And um, the thing that I just started making this year, uh, I just made last week 200 cinnamon buns uh, for a wedding brunch. And that actually is uh, from King Arthur's. They're... Um, recipe of the year so uh they turned out fabulous so if, I, if you like cinnamon buns go over to their uh, website i can't imagine how, that you making that many cinnamon <clears throat> buns my goodness it took me four days <laughs> oh my goodness wow jamie said jamie de palma she says you make wonderful sticky buns too <laughs> well that's what i just gave jamie and andy some of those the other night I wish I lived closer. <laughs> uh, so that is wonderful. Now you have the, the books and pattern packets and your kits and stuff are all on your website. Yes. Even though I've been in about 12 books, because at one period then too, I started working with Viking and I just, uh, I started doing multiple artist books and I coordinated them uh, for Viking, but you know, that kind of ended when the book business kind of ended. So I think I only have one book on my website, which is a book I did with Amy Mogish. Um, mm, it's something Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I well, think. you can keep it a secret and they'll have to go to your website yes, to find yeah. it, okay? <laughs> so Amy and I both did projects in it and it has a lot of cute things in it. Um, but that's the only one I have left. The rest I've sold out of. But I think uh, Viking still has some books. And, uh, you know, of course, with D-Stash, you can find some of the, um, the multi-artist books and things, too. Well, if it's any consolation, Amy says she can't remember the title either. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. We're both getting old. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like to say that we've done so much from between then and now that you can't possibly remember everything, right? 
Yes, I actually, I think the word creates in there because I like the word create. And I think it's create Christmas with Jane and Amy or uh, Jane and Amy create Christmas, something like that. Something like that. We'll have to go check it out. But um, that's wonderful. So if anyone has any questions for Jane um, about Quickwood, about, I mean, maybe uh, you had mentioned about paper clay that you're starting to work with that. So what's the difference between quick wood and paper clay? Well, uh, paper clay like takes 24 hours to dry where quick wood dries in 15 to 20 minutes. It, uh, so you can do things a lot, in a way I feel like with quick wood, you can do things a lot quicker, but then um, like with paper clay, you can have an armature or a thing and then cover it. Um, like here's a bird that I haven't covered yet with paper clay, but it's, you know, you take paper and cardboard and tape and you make a little armature and then you cover it with your, your clay. Oh, okay. Where with Quickwood, if I was building this, I'd start with a ball in the center, probably a ball here at the neck, hook it together, maybe put a little Quickwood around it and you know then put the beak on i just keep and maybe make the tail flat and then put with so quick wood and then put it on it would be a hundred percent quick wood through and through it'd be solid pretty quick much I, I use styrofoam in the middle of my projects okay. so um or uh, something else maybe but Stor stormy must have the book because she said the name of the book is jane and amy creates christmas Thank you, Stormy. <laughs> or create Christmas. Yeah. So she, thank you, Stormy. <laughs> so that's so that's the difference. Now, is there a difference in um, like odor or uh, the oh yeah the weight, yes the weight when it's done? I well, they both can be kind of a little heavier. Uh, one thing, Quickwood is a two part resin, so it is a chemical. And some people, uh, it bothers their hands and it does smell a little where paper clay doesn't have any of that. Okay. And Jamie, Jamie is asking if there are any new projects for net. <laughs> is that Jamie De Palma? That's Jamie De Palma. <laughs> well, I, I'm working on things, but I don't have them done yet. <laughs> we're, we're not having any reveals tonight. <laughs> They're all in her mind. So with in drawing book, in her sketchbook. In my sketchbook. <laughs> so I have to just get moving. So but Jamie uh, De Palma, Jamie and Andy are my woodcutters and they do a wonderful job. I'm, I just sure really shouldn't tell you that because I don't want you to know about them because it will take longer for me to get my wood. But <laughs> they do wonderful, wonderful work and they're just wonderful people. Yeah. And if you don't know, I interviewed them, I think it was last week. So you can go to the um, announcements and I believe they might still be under announcements. If not, they're definitely under media and mm -hmm. just look for the square that uh, has Andy in it. I think that's where the, the camera froze for me is Andy. So, <laughs> so go check it out and, and uh, watch that interview. They give you a nice little tour of their workshop. So it's really mm -hmm. sweet. Um, let's see. This person, Mick Corsini, uses uh, paper clay with her students at school. Easy to use, and the kids love to sculpt. Yay! Oh, good. I bought some. It's. I have a lot of good intentions. So I bought some paper clay, and I bought two tubes of quick wood. All of it is still in its packaging. <laughs> well, you know that is the thing. It, you know, it, it seems overwhelming sometimes when you really don't know how to use it. But if you take a little class like this one uh, and people explain it, it breaks it down and just makes it seem so much easier. Yeah, it, it, to me, it starts to be like the drawing, like you said, a circle and turn it into this or a cube and turn it into that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't it, know. It just speeds up that learning curve. And so, you know, it might cost a little bit to take a class, but really it's worth it. It, it uh, I, I agree. I will have to look into that. Um, Terry says, too late. I already know how wonderful they are. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
there you go. Then no more needs to be said. But thank you so much, Jane, for joining me tonight. You're and welcome. I, I really, I, I hope and pray that there's more for ARPA webinars um, in your future. And uh, I'm trying to push myself a little. <laughs> And yeah, and I'll definitely go see you down at NET in October. And everyone have a wonderful holiday weekend. Oh. If I don't see you or hear from you between now and then, don't uh, next week, next week, June 1st is on a Tuesday. And that is going to be because again, like, you know, you were talking earlier, Jane, about art being take all forms, right? Yes. And so I started introducing iris folding. So this is a watercolor and iris folding com combination. I'll be doing that on June 1st and the pattern uh, map and stuff is free in the group under the files. Um, so we're gonna have dots. We're gonna have Cindy Moore doing dots. We have Lydia doing a pencil, uh, color pencil with her peanut. If you're not familiar with peanut, a raccoon that visits her frequently um, for lunch and dinner or something, breakfast <laughs> and lunch, I don't know, but he's constantly, Peanut is constantly visiting uh, Lydia for food. And uh, we have also Amy, she will be doing chalking and you can find out more about what that's all about by joining us. I believe that's on Friday night. Uh, so we have a whole lineup of things happening in June. You never have to worry about what do I want, you know, what, what is there to do tonight? Come in artfully connected with Cindy Harrison and check out the, the events because there's going to be something for you all the time. So well, thank until, you for having, oh, thank you for having me, Cindy. And thank you for everyone who joining us. And uh, I just encourage you to keep on creating. So check, don't forget, check out her website and check out her blog for all those inspirational blog posts that she put up there. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you soon. We'll see you next week for your next week or two weeks for your class. June 8th. Yeah. So everyone else have a wonderful and safe Memorial Day weekend. Always remember to paint with heart. <laughs>